you got to say about this game? I like the response and controls. Oh. Oh. <laughs> We just got back from the Vintage Computer Festival Southeast for 2019. While we were there, we met some really interesting people. We also saw some really cool old school machines from throughout time. Everyone that we talked to was so cool and they also wanted to share their stories and show us all the equipment they had brought with them. We couldn't talk to everyone there because of how busy it was, but we did get to talk to some people and let them share their stories with you. So, tell us a little bit about this PBX. So, um, a friend of mine was cleaning out an office, and yeah. they told him, here, take all this stuff, so I ended up with it, and um, I have, over the years, had a little bit of an interest in telecommunications and phone freaking and all that kind of fun stuff. Oh, yeah. So, um, I've actually got the Avaya PBX, and it's running a simulated T1 line off of the Cisco router, and down underneath, I've got... A couple of thin clients and a NVIDIA Tegra board running asterisk. So oh, okay, cool. If I had internet, I'd be able to have it hooked up and you could call other people that are a member of the Collectors Network. Okay. Which is a whole bunch of people that collect old phone switches and just yep. old telephones have fun hooking them up. I see and, you got a bunch of modems here. Yep. And I've got a BBS running. Okay. And there's a couple of people... There's a terminal way over with the PDP stuff that's hooked up okay. that you can dial into the BBS. And oh, cool. Haven't really gotten too many people wanting to hook up to it. But well, maybe we can spread the word and get some more people interested. Yeah, up at the Chicago show, there's somebody that does very similar. They've got a yeah. phone system, and they just run cables all the way around the entire show. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Let's at least start a new game so that if somebody comes, they can play it. Anyway, what I have to do is, is get rid of these lights. Mm -hmm. See, all these circuits are overloaded. Yeah. See, I took on the pinball machine. On the pinball machine, that be all of them would be about that big or smaller. And I take them apart and put them back together, and then make the wires go through the circuits mm -hmm. so that it did the logic of checking to see if it can win, checking to see if it can keep you from winning, and then just make a move. And it goes here, here, and then usually by then it's a, it's a keep you from winning. Mm -hmm. That's neat. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. It had a, it required a little bit of work, but it, it Is that your pet? Is that your pet machine? Yeah. That's awesome. Did you see the new SD2 pet? I have. They weren't available at the time a couple months ago when I fixed this. I've had this pick for about 25 years. It's been broken all the time I owned it. Yeah. I just fixed it like a couple months ago so I can bring it here. And uh, those weren't available at the time, and so I bought a board that converted an old 1541 into an IEEE 488 drive. So cool, man. Now it works like a, like a pet drive. That's awesome. You can just write the disks to it with a regular 1541. That's one thing I wish I had as a pet. Yeah, that's that's what I was saying when we passed the earlier. I really like the pet. So what's it? That one is only an 80 column, though. It's with the first 80 column. So uh, you can't switch it to 40. The later ones, you can switch them. Now, you see jumpers inside? And this one, you can't. What's so. the 20th sign? This is the 20th sign, Michael Tomczyk. He was here last year. 
he worked for Commodore and helped market it, I think. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Bill Hurd was here a few years ago and signed a 128 that I had too, so I got a couple of signs. That's awesome. Oh, you've got the Super Mario running on the 64. Yeah, it confuses people. <laughs> yep. Oh, we got some 8-inch floppies. Oh. Get, get the 8-inch floppy in there. Yes. Yeah. I don't think you can really tell from the scale, but that's an 8-inch floppy back there. That's huge. Oh, that's pretty cool. So, is the is the ATR is that is that got the Z80 in it for CPM? It has the Z80 in it, but uh, uh, so yes, it is actually running the CPM. The Atari is now just a charge. Yeah, whoever owned these before, yeah, but let's see, Colin. Somebody's actually got Microsoft Bob running on a computer here. This is crypto? Cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I did my machine wrap with this. Yeah, cool. Nixie tubes. 
Whoa, I wonder what that is. I'm presuming you know what that is. I don't know, but it looks very interesting. Oh, did you zoom in on it? No, I didn't. What is it? It's core memory. Core memory? Core memory. It's yeah. Little magnetic cores. Okay. At the intersection of every one of the wires. Okay. Oh, and so like a ferrite kind of thing? Yes. Okay. But they're, they're microscopic. Uh, uh, this is 8K by 8, 18 bits wide. So you can imagine how many thousands and thousands of cores there are on there. That's awesome. Do you know what this is from? It's from a PDP-11. I took it out myself. Oh, okay. I bought the PDP-11 back in the 80s. Yeah. I made surplus cell. Okay. Because um, I was going to dismantle it for the TTL parts. So I pulled out the core memory and like, I'm not touching this board. I just put it in a, a shadow box and hung it up in my computer. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah. Got to admit. So do you make these replicas? Oh, that's him? Yeah. yeah. I'm working with him to build a replica command module. Oh, really? What, what's this? That is the FDAI, the 8-ball. Okay. If you've seen Apollo 13, yeah. and you hear um, uh, Tom Hanks say, uh, I got the frappin' 8-ball right in front of me. That's what he's looking at. <laughs> oh, okay. The red circle indicates uh, the gimbal lock. Okay. That's when um, the X, Y, and Z axes... They had physical axes on the gyroscope. Uh -huh. uh, and when when two of the three axes line up, yeah. it can no longer tell which one to separate. Okay. And so that's called gimbal lock. Look at all these books. Whoa, it's an original pond. Doesn't a Alex have a vectrix? Yeah, Alex has a bad Yeah. Yeah, we're just so amazed at how the whole industry seems to be coming alive. I know. The Amiga. Yeah. Hey, it's the vampire. The vampires are so awesome. <laughs> you know, uh, it's basically just a slide I put together. So, right. You know, people will know that, yeah, the Amiga, 34 years old, is still a viable platform because of people like Apollo Accelerator yep. and the guy that makes the terrible fire, Stephen Leary, I yeah. think. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so a lot of things are happening and I guess it really never stopped. You know? Let me get a close up of this. What's this machine here you got? It's just a PDM. PDM? Yeah. Yeah, just 15 kilohertz. Yeah, I wish I would have gotten some PBMs a few years ago before the price. Yeah, I know. You know, I was lucky I found out for like 15 years ago. I had a baby warehouse that was going out of business. There you go. The, I remember my basic commands from a billion years ago. And it looks like that was just fabricated in someone's garage. Not only any act, but I think there may have been some. So there's some sort of sketch pad. Oh, I, look at it. And it puts it on the screen if you trace over it. So now, is this the original specs of the T-99? Yes. So they were 16-bit and 3.3 megahertz? Yes. Internal draws. Okay. Because if you didn't have this, for the TR99, everything comes out the side like a sidecar. <laughs> they made an external drive for it? Yeah, this is... Yeah, uh, this is it. This is the ex expansion bus, basically. Oh, that's cool. What it is. It's huge. If you didn't have this, before that, you would have to have everything lined up and you take up a whole table with all the yeah. different all the different modules. So they you, they came out with this later on in order to alleviate this kind of problem. Oh, yeah. So now, now it just, that looks almost like a modern, like a 
No, the modern math or something. No, like you expect no, those to be it's dry. 82. No, you don't pull them out. It's, these are just the looks, but although they do have LEDs on. Is this powered on right now? It is. Uh, and as a matter of fact, you can see the oh, office. Oh, yeah, I, I do. I was the wrong angle. Yeah. As so, the game is going, he's playing the game, you can see the, uh, that it's accessing the So how much memory are on those things? Just 32K on this one. That's it. That's what they came out with originally? No, there's 16K in the machine. Right. And with this, I can add 32K. Okay. And it comes out to 48K, but it's really a little less than that because the, the internal BIOS takes some out. Right. Is that not cool? That's, that's awesome, 32K. Man. I didn't even know these existed. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Okay. So, what would you like to type in? You just... Oh, I can type it for you since you got the camera. Uh, subscribe to Cities. Now, I'm probably going to have to... Phonetically right. City Zen. Yeah. Is that okay? Alright, let me know when you're ready. I'm recording. Unfortunately, I forgot to bring the power for my ECS module, so I'm not able to hook it up and show it. I've never, I've never seen one. I've, I've heard of them, yeah. and I didn't even realize at first what it was because we were like, "What the hell is that?" But then, when yeah, that's the. Well, you know, it matched. It had an ECS module. It matches the two. It yeah. Matched the one. I don't have that one. And I brought my one because it's RGB modified. The two I have is not. So yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat. I need to get another one of Fred's boards and get my two upgraded and relapped. Yeah. Now are you are you doing the um, are you doing any of these off of OSSC? No. All of these are RGB so RGB out native. Well not native, modified yeah. RGB out. Modified RGB out. This is currently Super Video, but I have a RGB out board that, that needs to be installed. This is native RGB. This one's a VGA box fired by the uh, Bihar Brothers out in Turkey. Yeah. So, and then these are HDMI out front. And this is the analog board for the blister, you know, that's... Right. We had a lot of fun at the festival, and we definitely will be there next year with a table of our own. We hope you enjoyed watching this as much as we enjoyed putting it together. We plan on bringing you more coverage in the future at these and other types of events that center around these older machines as the movement continues to grow. If you'd like to be featured on our channel, please get in touch with us so we can help share your stories. If you like what we're doing, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications, and remember to hit the like button. You can also become a Patreon to help fund more content. Until next time, this is Deadline for Cities In.